Rotary blast hole technology continues to evolve. And with it, the training and support these machines and those who operate them require. I'm here today with an expert panel from our Rotary Drilling Division. Jock Spritz, Vice President, Technical Services, David Gillen-Walters, Field Technical Support Manager, and Keith Wallace, Training Manager. Welcome, gentlemen. And thank you for joining us. Make sure to post your questions in the chat box in our virtual booth, and we'll answer those at the conclusion of our presentation. Now, before we drill into how advances in technology are affecting product improvement, training, and support, give us your opinion on how mine technology has evolved in recent years and its effect on customer support. Jacques, we'll start with you. I think mine technology today is no different from what we're experiencing in our own homes. Um, everything is much more digital, it's online. We as customers want immediate support and it's no different in the mining world. Um, I feel the mining world is caught up with what's happening in the modern world in our homes today. So yeah, so I think we're all much more digital. Yeah, it's moved between you've got communication now at the mines with your phones. You're able to actually get out and work with the technicians. You can have live communication right there on the machine at site, which has changed tremendously. Absolutely. And on the the reporting side and data collection, uh, with the new technologies in place, it's allowed us and our customers to make more data-based decisions on, on their production and activities. So Jacques, what improvements have been made over the last 12 months? Well, in technical services and in rotary um, drilling, we've moved much to, towards the digital world. We've digitized a lot of our resources, online support, uh, moved away from, from paper-based work. Um, we've also moved towards online um, education and, uh, and developing of our resources. And connectivity has been uh, very important for us, where we can now connect, connect our equipment remotely um, and inter interact with our people in the field. And then most importantly, one of the, the, the major changes we've made over the last uh, 12 months was the introducing of our continuous product improvement process. We call it the CPI process. Um, and that's, that's been a, a huge um, advantage to our customers. So why is CPI so important and how does it add value to our customers? Well, the CPI process um, is a process where we capture all technical issues in the field and also improvements um, from our customers. Um, we prioritize and we make sure we work on the right things um, at the right time for our customers and at the end of the day deliver safe, simple, practical um, solutions in a, in a timely manner. And, um, and also very important is we, no idea get, gets unnoticed. We capture everything. So when we start developing new equipment, we've got a whole database of ideas that actually came from our customers um, and develop equipment according to what our customers are looking for. One advantage to the CPI process that I see is it, it closes that loop. So not only are we providing solutions to our customers in the field or our SAMVIC frontline personnel, but now we're gonna bring that home and, and improve that product and spread that out. So it, it's closing the loop also. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, you know, to link onto that, there's also a greater internal communication um, through our engineering department, our production and supply department of every issue that's happening in the field. Everyone is aware of, of what's going on in the, in the field and what we need to improve on. Um, with regards to building and delivering our equipment. And it allows us to really focus on those, those ideas and things that are, our customers are looking for. It allows us to record it, get it in front of everybody, and everybody can make the decision to, to bring that into play. Terrific. So David, tell me, how are you supporting the emerging technology? Using things like see what I see technology, that being you're seeing what the individual that is in the field is actually looking at and you're able to see it live. You're doing this remotely. So you're having to use um, sometimes at will connectivity. So when they need us to actually look on the machine, we're able to go in, look at the display, the software, we're able to actually go in and help them diagnose the unit and even look into electrical um, by walking around the, the machine with them. So you're physically watching what they're seeing and they're able to point out, take pictures. They're able to actually have that interaction direct with us. 
and that communication comes right here to back here to to our office. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to follow up on that question. Uh, you've answered part of this, but I want to give you an, an opportunity to expand on it a little bit more. Sure. How will remote support add value to our customers? Increase uptime is a real focus. We want to make sure that customer is able to get the most value out of their product. We want to see that those machines are running as, as much as possible and trying to make that a very swift um, resolution for that customer. And we're able to bring people around the table and it can be the designers, it can be the product owners, it's the people that truly know this product from the bottom line that they're able to assist that person that's out in the front line when they have that question and they're not able to get it answered. They're not able to find the problem. We're able to sit there and help them. Yeah, we can also help uh, what we remote support also help our, our frontline, Sandvik frontline organization is when it comes to development. We've got new individuals in the field they're working on new equipment, they've been trained, but now we can give them a, that additional insurance. Let's, let's connect with you to the equipment and look over your shoulder and make sure you're doing the, the, the right things. So Keith, I'll direct this question to you to start with. Um, training is normally done in a face-to-face -face environment. How is COVID-19 impacting customer training and how are you managing this challenge? Well, I'll start with the impact. Um, we generally would put out a, a yearling training schedule where we would invite our Sandvik personnel or customers to our facility. That had to stop immediately because of the travel restrictions. So we as a group had to change the way that we, that we looked at training. Um, and it, it actually forced us to, to find a new way to deliver that training and to still be effective with that. I think the end result has been very positive because we've brought in, as a result, some initiatives where we now are using our web-based communication tools where we can record all of our events. So there's multiple events now during the week. Uh, I actually feel like we're able to deliver more training in the virtual environment. We've also started some projects with e-learning. Um, so that's, that's a really good initiative. It gives them some flexibility. They're not time bound on what they're doing. And then another big thing that we learned from this is our frontline Sandvik personnel didn't have all the access they needed to our current training materials. So that forced us to build a central repository where we could share those materials with, with our people in the field and help them get that material to their customers. So it, it, it ended up being a positive situation. Yeah, after a couple of months being in COVID-19, um, it's forced us to be much more innovative and, and we see a lot of positive side coming from thinking in new ways. Um, you know, in the, in the beginning, we were all concerned and we're still concerned, but now we're thinking in a new way. We're thinking, well, how do we do things differently? So we see a lot of innovation coming to the table in the way that we work, the way that we support, the way we train. Um, and day by day, we're starting to do things differently and I think also more efficiently. Yeah, we're seeing that everywhere now. Um, so how will your focus towards online training add value to our frontline organizations and customers? Well, I touched on it earlier, but one of the, the biggest things is with, this, with the training that's recorded or an e-learning format, our customer or end user has the option. They're not bound to a time. They don't have to send eight of their technicians to our facility and for three days, you know, locked in a room. Now they can, they can use that virtual training and you know, the, the trainee can attend it at his own pace or her pace. Um, they can do it in smaller nuggets. We've tried to set up our e-learning in no more than 10 minutes. Our uh, web-based training that we do um, in that environment, we limit those to 30 minutes because we want those to be chunks that it's not overbearing on the learner. Um, so it gives a lot of flexibility in the way we can deliver training and the way the learner can receive that training. You know, so there's a lot of advantages to it. We, we're really enjoying it. Uh, I know we're excited about some of the offerings that we have, and we think it's going to improve our customers. It, as an end result, it's going to improve their training offering to their staff. So we, we hope to, to expand what we know about the equipment. We want to expand that out and have our customers know the equipment as well as we do. Um, because if they're producing and they're happy with our product, then, you know, we're selling more product. So. Yeah, I think we, we're changing the way that we, the culture around training, because if we look at our own days and how busy we are to find 
five, six hours to sit down and do some training. It never happens. And at the end of the day, it gets put off. So now if you break it down into 15 minutes um, bits or 30 minutes, we it's easy to do training. And what's happening now, we're starting to move to from the old way of doing um, more of a, a training event. Uh, we need to set two days aside. We're going to do training um, and then back to work. Now it becomes um, a way of working. It becomes continuous training. It's, a, it's part of the culture. So we're training rather than once in six months, we're training every day, just in 15 minute um, bits. Wow, that, that's a, a sea change from the way you were doing it 12 months ago, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, you know, it's funny that we haven't jumped on it sooner because when you look at adult learning theories, as adults, we like to control our own learning and our own path. Mm -hmm. So this, the virtual, the e-learning and, and these options, it, it allows that and it fits into that, that mold of what adult learning is. So. And one last question. What is our most important focus to improve the support to our customers through our Sandvik network in various countries? Well, it's a very simple formula. It's listening to our customers. Using the CPI process that I spoke about earlier, uh, coming to solutions with our customers in a timely manner, giving them feedback, solving their problems, and getting the machines back to production. That's what we're focusing on. Allows our customers and also our, our frontline to feel like their voices are heard when they have a problem and they have, have the interaction and the teamwork to try to help si find the solutions. I think along with hearing their voice, we want our, our customers and our Sandvik personnel to know that it, it's a partnership. We're in this together. We want to grow together. Um, if they're successful, we're successful, and, and as Jock said, it's, it's, we, hear, we hear your voice and we want to grow together. Thanks, gentlemen, for sharing your insights with us today. Now, let's move to our remote support room, where we'll learn a little bit more about our remote support offering. Keith, thank you for joining us. Um, need some assistance here. I know that uh, Matt was getting ready to be on the machine. We we're having a problem with the starter group. I pulled up the electrical um, cabinet. I've also okay. pulled up the parts page. We've got the screenshot from the machine right now. We're able to actually see live in the display. And I was going to walk him through in the cabinet real quick. So he's getting ready to call me and we were going to do a video, kind of trace it out with him and show him exactly right. where we need him. Well, that's good because we need to be able to see what he can see. So exactly. I don't know. All right. I'll message him now. So I'm here on the floor of seven days. I'm sorry to relay. Uh, however, I'm not sure where it is in the uh, electrical cabinet. Have you gotten me to it? Sure. Look in the. There you go. Right on the. Look to your left. Do you, okay. You see it up just a bit? Would it be this one? That would be it, sir. All righty. All right, so you need to trace your wires on that particular unit. Okay. Looks like I'm heading to C21 and C42. Yep. Perfect. So trace that out. Call me back when you have time, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of. Sounds good. I sure appreciate your help. Not a problem. Thank you, sir. Right. Bye. Have a good day. David, that was amazing. What was the driving force behind the development of the remote support concept? Technology changing. So the machines, as they improve and get smarter, they require more direct communication with people to help them understand because sometimes they're not able to diagnose all the issues. And we were looking at the customer's needs when it comes down to keeping the uptime. We want the machines to be operational. We want to help them and we don't want the lag between getting a person at site. We want to be able to get there as quick as possible. So we're able to remote in, talk right directly with somebody at site, be able to get that diagnosed as quickly as possible. How did you validate a market need for this offering? After a couple of times of being able to say we were able to help a customer remotely, it was able to immediately say how quickly we were able to save money for the customer and also for the company altogether. So our frontline speed of helping them, they were able to go to the next job, work very quickly for, to help more people. So it was how we were able to validate that. 
So what kind of uh, customer feedback have you received? Very positive, very positive. They're happy with the way that the speed of our um, assistance, the availability. We have um, people on call, people that are available. We um, do also offer our just laptop at times. We're able to get right to them and, and talk with them immediately to give them immediate assistance. Do customers require any special hardware or software aside from what's on the rig? Wi-Fi would be one of the biggest ways if they have it available in their pits or the areas that they, their shops or anywhere like that, their workshops. We would like to be able to get on that, that network to be able to communicate in, or we can go through other means. Cellular would be another way. So we would have a cellular connection there with the machine if required. Um, Hardware? Hardware, you're looking at um, something we already install on the drill for them. So we have the connection already there and available on the drill that we could, in order to see what they see. So as we've talked about, we want to be able to see what the person in the front line is, is um, actually seeing at the moment. We would require some hardware for that side. How do you see this technology evolving over the next three to five years? What, where do you see it going? Possibilities are endless. You can see potential of art artificial intelligence, being able to tell when a machine is starting to have problems, would be able to potentially call us when it has a problem, maybe notify you, would be able to um, help the customer to, to know immediately, maybe we could call them, let them know something is about to happen, or we could see some problems up and coming. Capabilities are endless. We could really take it to the moon.